Professional Obsession Engineering for another episode of Henry's Honda SP1 Restoration. It's fair to say that yesterday didn't entirely go to plan. My idea to just whip out a front engine bolt and pop a new one in that should have taken five minutes turned into a bit of a um, palaver. So that sucked up most of the day. So today I'm actually going to do the engine bits I should have been doing yesterday. So join me for an expedition into valve clearances and stuff. As well as doing valve clearances, I'm also doing a clutch modification and I'm taking off the side covers so that I can give them a bit of a polish. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is take the side covers off. So it's just a case of taking out all the little screws around the outside and hopefully it'll all come apart relatively easily. Famous last words. Then I'll be able to turn the engine over, which will make doing the valve clearances considerably easier. Everything's nice and clean, so I've not got a problem with getting any bits of horribleness inside the engine. So it should be relatively straightforward. So the first bit's nice and easy. You just take this sort of main magnesium cover off and you can get to the clutch. So if you're just doing a clutch change, it's really easy. Honda have obviously done this on purpose so that when they were racing the bikes, they could do clutch changes and stack height changes and bits really quickly. Real nice, simple idea. And I quite like what they've done. But we're going a little bit further because I need to repolish this cover. So I'm going to then just take all the rest of these bolts out around the outside, all of those, and then just give the cover a little bit of a tap with a soft hammer, and that should just pop straight off. The clutch covers come off nice and easily. It was just a little bit snug on one of the dowels down here. So a little bit of a tap and it came off relatively easily. Now this cover is actually held on with crankcase and not with a gasket. So later on we'll just give the surfaces a real good clean before we put it all back together. So to show you what's inside here, that's the primary drive at the end of the crank. That drives onto the back of the clutch. Um, these are the cam drives because these engines are gear driven cam, not cam chain or cam belt. It's more accurate and it's more expensive to make, hence why people don't usually bother. But Honda love it. And on a race bike it makes sense because you get no backlash and no sort of play in any of your cam drive. So it's a really good thing on a race bike. So there we go. We've got uh, a clutch mod to do. So what I'm going to do next is whip the screws out the front of the clutch, off the pressure plate, take the clutch pack out and do a little bit of a modification. So this is the clutch modification. The early bikes like this one just had a set of completely plain uh, friction and steel plates. The later bikes from 2002 onwards, mostly the SP2s, had this slightly smaller plate, friction plate. They then had a seat plate and then this little spring plate. This is sort of concave or convex, whichever one you want to call it. Um, and what you do is you fit these at the back of the clutch in place of the first friction plate and what they do is they they're an anti-judder thing this spring plate in effect takes a little bit of the judder out of the clutch so that especially round town riding slowly what you might find is as you let the clutch out it judders a little bit and the spring effect of this removes some of that judder so it should make the bike better to ride and it's nice and easy to do it doesn't cost a lot of money so while we've got it apart it seemed like a good idea so that all the way down the bottom of there at the bottom of the stack is the last friction plate, which is a different diameter to the others now, and the two anti-judder plates. The sort of sprung one is nearest me, and the larger diameter that sort of points outwards, points outwards. Hopefully that sort of makes some sense. So now I can put the rest of the plates back in. That's all the plates back in. The one that goes on this end has a little green marker on it, if you're on genuine Honda clutch plates. And the one at the other end, if you're using the original, would have a little green marker on it. And that's because they run half on the steel sort of uh, intermediate plates and half on the aluminium pressure plate. So these ones are actually slightly different material so that they don't wear the aluminium pressure plate so much. While I've got this cover off, I'm also going to do the valve clearances because I can turn the end of the crank there so I can set the cams where I need them to check the clearances. Nice and easy while I've got it apart. So to do my valve clearance measurement, I have a ratchet on the end of the crankshaft so I can turn the engine over. I've removed the rocker cover, which is just three bolts that hold that down. Pop the rocker cover off, and I've taken the spark plugs out of both cylinders so that when I turn it over I'm not trying to compress air, which is just a faff. So what I've done is I've turned the crank so that these lobes are sticking straight upwards. Then what I'm going to do is just feed a feeler gauge in between the lobe and the bucket, and... Depending on what size feeler gauge fits, depends on what clearance I have. 
Then all I'll do is I'll turn the crank a little bit more so it brings these lobes to the top so I can get underneath those, check the same on those, and hopefully we'll be in spec. If not, we'll have to take camshafts out, which is a little bit of a faff, but not too bad on this relatively easily arranged engine. That, as you can see, is a feeler gauge wedged under a cam lobe, and it's a quite a tight fit. I certainly can't get anything bigger in there. So I'm happy that that is 12 thou, which is 0.3 of a millimetre, give or take an absolute nat's cog. The tolerance on these is 0.31 of a millimetre, plus or minus 0 0.03, and 0.16 on the inlet, plus or minus the same. So the exhaust is happy. Hopefully the inlets will be, and then that'll be one cylinder head and done. So I've popped the rear rocker cover back on, just a little bit smear of uh, sealant sort of around these half moons. The rest of the gasket look nice, so we don't need to go over the top and put sealant everywhere. And then I've moved on to the front cylinder head, and a little bit more of a game because there's a few more bits in the way. But that's all tickety-boo. And interestingly, inside the uh, rocker cover, under the breather plate, is actually marked the dyno place it went to and when the clearances were last checked. So it turns out I didn't really need to check them because it's not really done a lot since then. But, what can I say? It's better to check twice than never check at all. So the next job on the agenda is to clean up the outer cover. So I have some polish, an outer cover, some Ed China spec orange gloves, and basically I'm just going to get in here and with the polish on a bit of a rag and clean everything up as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just want it to look a little bit more like it did when it left the factory. I've whipped the water pump off because it's easier to get in everywhere, so I'm just going to get in there and finger blast the dirt off. So that's the clutch cover's had a good buffing up and it's come up really quite nicely. Don't know how well the light in here will actually pick it up. Um, what I've done is I've just left the water pump unpolished for a minute so we can see the difference between the two. and. Again, I'm not sure how well the camera shows it, but there's a definite improvement on the finish, and it's just how I wanted it. It's not sort of bright, complete mirror finish. It's just really nice and shiny, like they came out of the factory. So I'm going to buff the water pump back up, and then I can uh, clean up the mating faces and pop it all back together. Now that I've got my covers all cleaned up, apart from the mucky fingerprint I've just put on it, I can pop that down. I've checked the O-rings and bits for the water pumps and all that sort of bits, all these water pump and... Uh, oil pump uh, o-rings and they're all looking okay so what I've done is I've scotch brighted all these faces around here and the same on the cover uh, then I've run a stone over them to make sure they're actually flat there's no high spots or anything given them a wipe with some brake cleaner blown everything out in here so there's no debris in it so now I can apply a smear of crankcase sealant everywhere make sure all my o-rings are in place on the cover and pop everything back together so that's the clutch cover all nicely buffed up and refitted. It actually looks really, really nice on the bike. It looks just really good and clean. So the next thing to do is come around to the other side. And now this cover looks shabby in comparison. So it's time to take the alternate cover off and give that the similar treatment. To give a bit of a before and after demonstration, I've actually just taped over half of the cover, given the first half a quick polish. This is sort of first coat, as it were and you can see there quite clearly just how much sort of unpleasant watermark staining we've ended up on there and it actually didn't look that bad on the bike but it's when you've given the other half a little bit of a buff that it really shows it up so i'm really really pleased at how well that's coming up so i've got my cover ready as with the clutch cover i've cleaned this face removed any of the old gasket it is actually a paper gasket this side and I've given it a rub over with the stone and then a good clean up and then blown it all out to make sure there's no debris in it. And then I've done the same thing over here. I've removed any old gasket material, I've given everything a stone over, given it all a blow down, made sure it's all nice and clean and I've also refitted the starter motor because with the cover off it's easier to get everything engaged down here. So that was a bit of a bonus. So what I'm going to do next is pop the gasket on that I have here but... I tend to put a smear of grease on the gasket just so that if some point relatively soon it needs to come off it's got more chance of coming apart without snapping the gasket in half. So I'm going to give that a smear of grease and pop the cover back on. So that's the alternator cover back on and looking considerably better than when it was taken off. So the motor's nearly buttoned up except the pipes of the oil cooler need to go back on which really means I need to actually you know clean them up and paint them. So that's the next job, oil cooler. 
the oil cooler is actually clean because it gathered a good soaking yesterday in the degrease tank and I've even cleaned out between the fins so it'll work perfectly well. It just looks a little bit grotty because it's sort of been pitted and a bit corroded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the washing up bowl down there and then I'm going to add something just a little bit aggressive that pretty much eats, well, nearly anything. And then we're going to leave it overnight and see what it looks like in the morning. So the substance I'm using today is aggressive enough that we have on occasions when I've worked in the desert and places used it as anti-seize compound because it will eat through bits of metal. But it can be used to actually clean things as well. It's a wondrous thing and yeah, you're allowed to drink it. Um, yeah, it's, it's cola. Hopefully the bubbly goodness of it will strip any impurities out of the metal and leave us with a nice clean aluminium finish. It may not work at all, but we've not really got anything to lose. While the oil cooler soaks in coke, I've decided to put the throttle bodies back on. But before I put those on, I've needed to put the water pipes and bits back in. So they're all refitted after a bit decent clean. Uh, all the breather systems back in and I've checked that nothing's leaking. So yeah, that's the next job is to drop the uh, throttle bodies in. So I've given the throttle bodies a thorough cleaning. And the next thing I'm going to do is spray a little bit of lube in here, a bit of GT85 around this and around the outside of this one because this one actually pulled the rubber off the inlet instead. Give them a good lube up so they've got a fighting chance of going on. Attach the choke cable and then I can slip it in. So that's the throttle bodies back in. They actually went in relatively easy with a bit of lube and a bit of wiggling around. The throttle cables are reattached. There's just a little bit of free play in the throttle like I like. Uh, the electrical bits are all reconnected with a bit of lube in the connector. So that's happy days on that bit. The next bit, I suppose, is to pop the airbox back on. So with the airbox back on, I think that'll do for today. It's been really constructive. I've got lots done. The engine is basically all back together. So now, I suppose the next stage will be radiators and oil coolers and bits like that so we can put fluids back in it. But that's a job for another day. Thanks for watching and join me again next time for some more SP1 fun.